So now moving again into the, the best practices. As I was kind of saying earlier in the presentation, the best practices are really just a reiteration of all the principles that we were talking about. Um, so going through and making sure that we understand how total stations work, the basic principles and kind of how we account for the error is really gonna help us set up our surveys, set up our, our monitoring projects and, and, and be successful. Um, I also really wanna to, want to make sure we introduce the idea of uh, time now saves time later, especially when we're talking about these automated systems or semi-automated systems. Um, a little bit of planning time now is gonna save a lot of time down the road, especially when you're talking about setting up your, your backside, setting up your total station, making sure you have good monumentation so the total station mount is good, your backsides aren't moving, ensuring you have good line of sight. So if you need to clear some vegetation, spending an extra half hour today to just trim the vegetation, make sure it's, you know, you pull the weeds out and you put some weed killer down, that's gonna save hours and, and days of headache down the road. So little things now can, can make up for a lot of time later. Um, I also wanna talk about kind of the best practices when choosing a total station. Uh, and so you really wanna understand the accuracy and the thresholds before you install your equipment in the field. Uh, sometimes you don't have time to do that and that's totally fine. You can just use uh, whatever total station you can. Uh, but you always wanna make sure that your total station at least meets or exceeds those accuracy and range measurements. Because again, even though it's not gonna put any more wear and tear on the total station to measure you know, an extra 100 meters, uh, making sure that it's well within the tolerance and is gonna be reliable and accurate and, and be able to shoot all the time and measure consistently, that's gonna be one of the most important things. So you always wanna understand all those requirements before the project starts and choose the appropriate total station. Uh, for automated monitoring, we support the S-series total stations. Uh, so the S7, which is going to be the, the standard fare for monitoring, it can go five second to one second, has a one millimeter, e, one millimeter EDM, uh, has a, a built-in camera option, so you can always open the total station up, look through camera feed, add targets, do some site checking, whatever it might be. The S7 is a great instrument. We see that on most of our monitoring projects. Uh, the S9 and the S9HP are really good options if you need some more accuracy, uh, need some, some higher angular accuracy, or if you need longer range measurements. So the S9 can be spec'd into half second with some millimeter EDM. You can also throw in the long range fine lock option on there. Um, there's a lot of reasons you would choose one or the other. We have a decision matrix. Um, I won't go into too much detail on this right now because you can always come back to the recording, pause this and see it. Um, next, I wanna talk about best practices for geometry. Uh, so you really wanna kind of understand the zone of influence and, and the area that you're monitoring before everything starts. That way you can lay your back sights out, uh, again, surrounding the area at similar distances and angles to your, your monitor targets. Um, it's always better and easier to have extra back sites. So again, spending another hour today uh, to go and mount another back site and, and shoot that prism in and really understand where it is, add it to the monitoring survey, it's gonna add a lot more uh, reliability and redundancy to your setup. And so it's always worth, always worth doing if you can. You also wanna ensure reliable line of sight to your back sites. Any changes in your survey geometry, especially when it comes to your back sites, is gonna have uh, a pretty substantial effect on the results of your survey. So making sure that when you set your back sites up, you're gonna be able to measure those every single time. Uh, you also really wanna make sure you have reliable and stable mounts for your prisms and your total station. Again, any unwanted movement, especially in your back sites, is gonna skew the results uh, of your survey and of your monitoring. So you really wanna make sure that you're setting those up and making sure that they're uh, set up properly. Uh, when it comes to automating your total station, there's a few more things we wanna take into account as well. Uh, so power and communication is going to be essential for automating your total station. Uh, automated total stations obviously are running in the field 24-7 uh, and they're transmitting data in real time. And so having your instrument powered, whether it's going to be grid power or solar, uh, and on a reliable uh, internet connection, whether it's going to be cellular connection or local ethernet available, whatever it might be, you want to make sure that these things are available and reliable before you even install. Uh, instrument shelters can be a great idea as well. So the total stations are totally fine to run in the field 24-7 no protection. They're super durable, super weatherproof. And we have the one, for example, on our system uh, in Westminster running with no shelter. It's been there for years and it's totally fine. Uh, but the instrument shelter can really help in terms of UV protection, fall protection, um, theft and vandalism, all this different kind of stuff. It can really just help protect that total station, especially if it's going to be installed in a, a, a noisy environment or a dynamic environment. Uh, another note for automated systems that data management is really uh, key for a successful project. Um, so we want to make sure that, that at the very least, if you're using a SIM card connection or a cellular connection, that that SIM card is paid and up to date. You'd be surprised how many systems we see get taken offline because somebody forgot to pay the AT&T bill, and now construction has stopped and halted. So a $30 a month charge that gets uh, kind of neglected and thrown to the wayside, that can, that can put a pause on, on a huge project. 
Uh, so you really want to make sure that that kind of stuff is taken care of, planned for, and, and managed well. Uh, I also want to touch again on the idea of baselines. So again, establishing positions for your targets as soon as possible. That way you can understand the natural behavior of whatever it is you're monitoring, especially prior to uh, whatever reporting you have to do. Uh, especially with railway buildings, rock faces, uh, changes in temperature, changes in season, these can have huge variation uh, or, or huge influences on the variations you see. And so understanding that before everything starts is gonna be really important. Uh, starting early also buys you a lot of time. Uh, so there are always gonna be changes that you need to make. Uh, the, the best plans are often uh, thrown to the wayside as soon as something happens. Uh, so you really wanna start early and start measuring and start uh, kind of using the system and understanding how the site behaves. That way, if you need to make a change, if, if somebody you know, knocks over a backside or all of a sudden uh, they put a pole up in the way of one of your backsides, you want to make sure that you have time to respond to that uh, and make those changes before the monitoring becomes a critical piece of the infrastructure. Um, it's also important to kind of, maybe not with the idea of baselines, but the idea of starting early. You really want to make sure you practice with any new equipment before you go out in the field and set it up. Spending a half hour in the office and going through it, unboxing everything, plugging it in, for the automated systems, powering your total station up, putting some prisons around your desk and just measuring it and seeing how it works. That time spent now can save a lot of time later on in the field. It might seem a little bit silly and when you set it up, it might feel uh, really easy and really straightforward, but you want it to be as simple as possible. And so when you go in the field, you're not touching th things for the first time, you understand how they work. Things are pre-configured if you can, so you put SIM cards and everything and get the communication online. All these different kinds of little things can, can make a big difference later on. Uh, and most importantly, I want you guys to remember that that all the principles we talk about for monitoring are the same principles we talk about for just good surveying practices. And so as long as you follow those, you can be set up for a successful project.